Okay, for this next part, we're going to look at planes of the body. And these are imaginary ways that we divide the body up in two. So the first one we're going to talk about is the sagittal plane. And the sagittal plane divides the body into left and right portions. Okay, so the sagittal plane, left and right portions. If it's exactly left and right halves, we call that mid-sagittal. Okay, so mid-sagittal means it's exactly left and right halves. Right, the transverse plane divides the body into upper and lower pieces, or upper and lower portions. And then the coronal plane, which is also called the frontal plane, divides the body into anterior, posterior portions, so front and back portions. So remember there's really four different kinds, mid-sagittal, sagittal, coronal, and transverse. <clears throat> All right, what's this one? This is frontal or coronal. Take a second, look at this one. Sagittal, okay. It's sagittal because it's not straight down the midline of the body. That would make it mid-sagittal. Okay. This one is transverse, upper and lower portions. Here's the brain. Okay. What's this one? Also transverse. This one is mid-sagittal, okay, now, because it's dividing the brain to left and right portions exactly. If you didn't know the brain anatomy, you could just say sagittal. This one, it's going to be a front and back portions or posterior, inferior, or posterior, anterior portions, and that's coronal or frontal. We do a couple other ones here that we're going to draw out. One of those is um, the oblique plane. Okay, and that's when we cut something at an angle. So if we have a blood vessel. Okay, and we cut that blood vessel at an angle. Okay. I'm just going to draw it like this. So if we cut that. At an angle. Like that, we'll get a piece that looks like this. Okay, and a piece that looked like that. So that's an oblique plane. And longitudinal would be if we did the same thing, but instead cut it lengthwise. So we would have this piece and that piece. Okay, so that's the longitudinal one. Okay, body cavities. Body cavities protect our internal organs uh, by one, controlling the temperature, and mechanical protection. Mechanical protection protects you from mechanical forces, like um, your thoracic cavity, your chest, protects your heart and lungs from being crushed or damaged if you get hit, to a certain extent. 
Body cavities also keep related organs close to each other. For example, um, in your uh, thoracic cavity, you have your heart and lungs, and they work together to keep the blood oxygenated and keep the body oxygenated. Two major body cavities, the dorsal and the ventral. So remember from what we just talked about, where are the dorsal and ventral body cavities? Okay. This is from your text. Ventral body cavity is made up of the thoracic and the abdominal pelvic. Notice the spelling of abdominal pelvic. It's not abdominal, it's abdominal pelvic. <clears throat> the thoracic and abdominal pelvic cavities are separated um, by the diaphragm. The abdominal or the abdominal pelvic cavity is then divided up into the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. The dorsal cavity has two subcavities, the cranial cavity and the vertebral canal. Vertebral canal is where your spinal cord lies. Okay. Let's talk about how the thoracic cavity is further divided. The thoracic cavity is um, made up of three sub-cavities, the left pleural cavity, the right pleural cavity, and the mediastinum. Okay. And within the mediastinum, you also have the pericardial cavity. Okay, so we're going to talk about ways we can memorize things. I'm going to give you the very brief story behind this because it takes long. Um, acronyms are great ways to trick yourself into remembering things. You know, a lot of anatomy and physiology is just memorization. As a matter of fact, almost all of anatomy one is memorization. And you have to memorize this stuff so you can use the physiology behind it, so you can understand the physiology. You can't really understand how the parts work if you don't know what the parts are. So for most of my early career in um, anatomy and physiology, I used acronyms all the time to memorize things. Uh, so this one, all guys like pizza sizes super. I was using this acronym when I was uh, in EMT and trying to memorize all of the organs of the abdominal cavity. And the Marlene and the moving story at the pizza place. Basically, um, this girl I knew helped, asked me to help her move. And as payback, she was going to take me out for pizza. Well, when we got to the pizza place I like, they know the kind of pizza I like. And it's a large extra cheese pepperoni pizza. And I always ate the whole thing. Well, Marlene decided, no, I'll just have some of yours. And I was really kind of struck by this because, well, I always ate the whole pizza, which may or may not have been a good idea. And it kind of stuck with me. And when I was trying to memorize these organs, I came up with this acronym, All Guys Like Pizza Sizes Super. So we'll see where that comes into play. All right. So first we're going to do a, talk about the abdominal cavities or the abdominal quadrants and we have four quadrants because it's quadrants and they're divided up or cross at the um, belly button or the umbilicus so this is where they divide up okay and remember that we have to talk about the patient so we'll talk about the left upper quadrant the left lower quadrant, the right lower quadrant, and the right upper quadrant. Okay, so that's the quadrants. Now here's the same thing, but looking at the organs in there. First of all, the organs that are in there, uh, through all of them, you have, well, almost all of them, you have the large intestine, small intestine. But these ones, are generally within this area. Um, in the right lower quadrant, you have the appendix. Okay. 
the right upper quadrant, you have the liver and the gallbladder. Add another D in there, it didn't come out. The left upper quadrant, you have the stomach, spleen, and the pancreas. Okay. And then the left lower quadrant, you really don't have any specific um, organelles other, or organs other than the small intestine, large intestine. So <clears throat> this is how I memorized this. I used the all guys like pizza sizes super and that A, right lower quadrant appendix, GL, guys like liver gallbladder, PSS, stomach spleen, or pancreas, stomach spleen. Okay? And, and this one, there are no, so I have zero. And I just remembered that one because Marlene left me feeling a little bit hungry because she ate about half of my pizza, which I will get over. It's only been, I don't know, 20 something years. Okay, another way that we divide up the abdominal cavities is through um, this system where we have really nine different areas. And in the center we have this umbilical region. Uh, we have the right lumbar and then the left lumbar. The right hypochondriac, the left hypochondriac. Okay, and the hypochondriac really refers to um, the uh, area of cartilage in that part of the rib cage. Then we have the epigastric region, which is up here. And think about gastric, like your stomach, above the stomach. And the hypogastric region down here. Right iliac, your ilium is your hip bone, or one of your hip bones, and the left iliac is your other one. Okay, our organ systems. We have the, um, and I'm just going to let you go through this list. You can read it as well as I can. Uh, some of you probably haven't heard of. Integumentary system is your skin. Endocrine system, your hormones. Lymphatic system is where we develop our immunity and fight off infections. The rest of them you probably should have heard of at some point. Homeostasis is um, how we... Uh, actually, I'm going to start this with the next lecture, so this will be in part three.